Paano nga ba natin gagawin ang objective 9 from number 1? Hi teachers! Welcome back to our channel at maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong support at sa mga new subscribers dyan, welcome sa ating channel. For today's video ay pag-uusapan naman natin kung paano nga ba natin sasagutan ang set B, Teacher Reflection Form o TRF ng Objective 9 from number 1. KRA 3 Objective 9 Designed, adapted, and implemented teaching strategies that are responsive to learners with disabilities, giftedness, and talents. Disclaimer lamang po, lahat ng aking sasabihin sa video na ito ay based on my own understanding about RPMS tool for proficient teacher. Sa objective na ito ay kakailanganin po natin ang RPMS tool for proficient teacher ang ating TRF rubric for Teacher 1 to 3 at ang ating Teacher's Reflection Form. For Objective 9, mayroon po tayong two sets of MOV. Ang set A, which is the COT rating sheet, and set B, which is the TRF or Teacher Reflection Form. Sino po ba ang pwedeng gumamit ng set A as means of verification? Sila po ang mga teachers na may identified learners with disabilities, giftedness, or talents. Ibig pong sabihin, ang Objective 9 ay pwedeng maging classroom observable objective para sa mga teachers na nabanggit. Samantala po, ang set B naman ay ang MOV na gagamitin na mga teachers na walang identified learners with disabilities, giftedness, and or talents. And of course, with a certification from the school head certifying that the rated class or classes have no identified learner or learners with disabilities, giftedness, and or talents. Since wala po akong identified learners with disabilities, magpo-focus po tayo sa set B, which is the Teacher Reflection Form or TRF. Again po, ang ating MOV ay TRF at Certification from our School Head. Now, paano tayo makakakuha ng rating na 5 o Outstanding? Tingnan po natin ang TRF rubric for Teacher 1 to 3. Ito po ang RPMS TRF rubric for Teacher 1 to 3. Ito po ang magiging guide ng ating mga rater sa pag-score ng ating TRF. Nakasaad po dito na makakakuha tayo ng outstanding or 5 if reflections, annotations, and or outputs exceed the expectations of the TRF prompt. They are complete and show comprehensive and in-depth knowledge about the topic or question by providing accurate details and some critical inputs or creativity. Makakakuha naman po tayo ng very satisfactory or four if reflections, annotations, and our outputs exceed the expectations of the TRF prompt. They are complete and show comprehensive knowledge about the topic or question by providing accurate details. Makakakuha naman po tayo ng satisfactory or three if reflections, annotations, and our outputs Meet the expectations of the TRF prompt. They are complete and show sufficient knowledge about the topic or question. Makakakuha naman po tayo ng unsatisfactory or two if reflections, annotations, and or outputs partially meet the expectations of the TRF prompt. They are either complete or incomplete and show limited knowledge about the topic or question. At four naman po or one if reflections, Annotations and or outputs do not meet the expectations of the TRF prompt. They are incomplete and totally disconnected from what is asked. Proceed na po tayo sa mismong TRF or Teacher Reflection Form. May nakalagay po dito na directions, basahin po natin. Reflect on your attainment of the RPMS objective by answering the questions or prompts provided. Use any local or official language that you are comfortable with. Use extra sheets if needed. Please limit your response to 500 words. So, ang directions po ay self-explanatory naman, kaya hindi ko na po masyadong i-elaborate further. 
proceed po tayo sa prompt number 1, context. Clara is often seen restless or unfocused in class. She also has troubles following instructions and skips activities when left unsupervised. Action taken, you had a conference with her parents and found out from them that Clara was diagnosed with a learning disability. So, let's assume po na tayo ang teacher ni Clara. How will you modify the instructions for Clara to keep her focus on classroom activities? Write your reflections in this form. Mention in your reflections a specific learning disability that you are familiar with or have researched on. So, paano ko ito sinagutan ang prompt number 1 ng objective 9? Ano po ang ginawa ko para makakam up po ako sa aking reflection? So, as a teacher handling regular students, I am not familiar with a specific learning disability na similar po sa case ni Clara. Kaya po ang ginawa ko ay nag-research ako ng different learning disabilities. And not only that, kailangan ko rin pong i-modify ang aking class instructions and mag-apply po ng teaching strategies in order to keep uh, Clara focus on our classroom activities. So, ipapakita ko lang po ang aking ginawang reflections. Having a conference with Clara's parents and upon knowing her condition, I immediately think of the appropriate teaching approach or strategies that I might adapt and apply for her. Understanding her learning condition will enable me to provide an intervention to meet her learning needs. As a teacher, I have come up to a conclusion that Clara's condition is probably an auditory processing disorder or APD. Based on my research, APD is a deficit in neural processing of auditory stimuli that is not due to higher order language, cognitive or hearing loss, and yet it is associated with difficulties in learning disorder. Individuals with APD may not be able to process what others are saying and cannot come up with a response quickly. The child may find it hard to understand to localize the source of a signal, inconsistent or inappropriate responses, to request for information, unable to follow directions, and difficulty maintaining attention. Naka-indicate po dyan kung saan po or anong source po ang pinaguhanan ko ng information about APD. Sa third paragraph po ay nakalagay po dyan ang modification or class modification kung saan ay nagmodify po ako ng aking class instruction for Clara to keep focus on our classroom activities. To keep Clara focus on our classroom activities, it will be more helpful for her if I position her to sit in front of the class. This reduces sound and sight distractions and improves access to my voice and all my visual cues. I will call the class attention and ensure that it is quiet before giving instructions. I will utilize more visual tools and make sure that I have an eye contact with Clara. I will slow down my speech, use short sentences, and give, and give Clara extra time to process what I have been said. I will repeat or rephrase the information as necessary. Being sensitive to Clara's learning difficulties is very necessary to ensure that learning takes place. I will make her feel that she belongs to our class and the group of learners I am handling. And by doing so, I am confident that all learners will receive equal knowledge and quality education that I can offer. At ito po ang certification signed by our school head that the class I am handling has no identified learners with disabilities, giftedness, and or talents. Dito na po nagtatapos ang ating video about Objective 9, Prompt Number 1. I hope na marami kang natutunan. And if you did, please don't forget to like this video, comment, share, and subscribe. And also hit the notification bell to get updated. Thank you so much and God bless.